Welcome back. This is Beth Greer, and I'm talking with Lear Keith about her book, The Vegetarian Myth, on your supernatural life here on Green 960. Talk a little bit about soy milk and soy infant formula, which is really destroying the health of, of babies. Yeah, I had a, actually an infant in my immediate family who nearly died from um, eating soy formula. He had to be rushed to the hospital having anaphylactic shock from soy. So mm. um, very direct. I've seen what this can do. Um, yeah, soy is not an appropriate food for humans, it, uh, especially for infants. I mean, number one is the endocrine disruptors. You know, it's filled with, with phytoestrogens, and this is actually a way that plants fight back. Uh, when I was a vegetarian, when I was a vegan, I thought this was, you know, that eating a plant-based diet was not just healthy and happy, but that also it was nonviolent. And the fact is that plants don't want to be eaten either. Mm-hmm. And they've developed all kinds of wonderful ways to fight back. They cannot locomote, okay, so they can't run. And they don't have teeth and claws because they can't really move. So they, what they've done is they've developed chemical warfare. And this is what they've been doing for like a billion years. And they're really good at it. So they figured out ways to repel. So some of them are physical methods like thorns. But, you know, the, what else, the other thing that they do is they create chemicals that will kill or hurt animals that might want to eat them. Okay, that would be us. So soy has quite a number of different really toxic chemicals that it produces. And one of those is the phytoestrogens. In one good way to, to fend off a predator if you're a plant is, you know, well, if I can't kill you directly, I'm going to make sure you don't reproduce. And that's what the phytoestrogens do. They disrupt the human endocrine system by, you know, creating these analogs that look sort of like human hormones but aren't quite exactly. So that's what phytoestrogens do. They'll fill your estrogen receptors with, um, you know, little chemicals that, in fact, are not estrogens, but they act sort of like them in your system. And this was one of the main reasons that, you know, I did such damage to my reproductive system. My sister also was a vegan for 15 years. She ended up with horrible endometriosis, and it was directly Mm -hmm. from the soy. Had to have a hysterectomy last year. Um, oh, these are, you know, awful. long-term, really profound, bad things that will happen to you from eating soy. So for a, a baby infant, you know, a little human infant, to be eating, um, you know, infant soy formula instead of breast milk, it's a hormone load equivalent to taking four birth control pills a day. Nobody in their right mind would give their child birth control pills. But that's every really, time you give your child soy milk, that's what you're doing. If you're just joining us, I'm talking with Lier Keith, author of The Vegetarian Myth on... Your Supernatural Life here on Green 960. I want to talk a little bit about how vegetarian nutrition affects eating disorders, specifically anorexia sure. and bulimia, because I was really surprised mm-hmm. by some of those statistics in your book. Can you right. share right. that? Yeah. Somewhere around half of all the teenage girls and women who are affected by eating disorders are vegetarian. And when I was a vegan, that was really upsetting to me. Um, because, you know, I'm a very strong feminist, and I couldn't figure out why, what the connection was. Well, the connection's actually biochemical. It's not a big mystery. If you do not have enough tryptophan in your brain, you cannot produce serotonin. And we all know that serotonin is, you know, the happy chemical that depressed people don't have enough of. Um, you can't, you know, your brain has to make certain neurotransmitters for you to have a happy, stable mood, one of them being serotonin. And those neurotransmitters are all made from amino acids. Amino acids are the building blocks of protein. So if you don't eat protein, you cannot get these precursors to the neurotransmitters that your brain needs. And the problem, of course, with vegan vegan and vegetarian diets is that it's a very low protein to start with, and the only protein that you're getting is plant-based proteins. They come wrapped in cellulose. So they'll make all these claims, well, you can eat rice and beans, that'll be a complete protein. It's actually really poor quality protein. Because it it comes wrapped in cellulose, we can't get to it as humans. Our our digestive systems don't contain a mechanism to digest cellulose. So it doesn't actually matter, you know, how much protein may or may not be in those grains and beans. Your your body isn't going to be able to access it. And this is why it's poverty food the world round. You can, you know, you can barely get any of it out. Um, when it, as it goes through your digestive system, you're not really accessing it. Mm. So what happens is, you know, when you don't have enough tryptophan, your body, cannot, your brain, you can't make serotonin without that as a building block. block. There's, there's no way for you to get it. You have to eat it. Um, and one thing that will happen, not just to humans, but to other mammals, if you do not have enough serotonin, 
is you'll you can one thing that can happen is there's all kinds of uh, compulsive behaviors that um, will will you know start to happen to people, and one of them is eating disordered behavior. So anorexia and bulimia are actually very predictable behaviors that happen to people who don't have enough tryptophan in their diets. They can actually induce eating disordered behavior in rats and in birds by mm. denying them tryptophan in their diets. So uh, that's the trajectory that a lot of young women are on, you know, and, and it's, for, again, it's for good reasons. They really want to save the planet and they want to, they don't want to hurt the fluffy chicks, you know, and the little baby pigs. And, mm. you know, groups like PETA know that this is a really great market for their ideology and they target teenage girls in magazines that are geared to teenage girls. So then, you know, your average 15-year-old sees this, and if she cares about the world, she thinks this is the thing to do, she starts eating a vegetarian diet, and six months later, she's got an eating disorder. And I can tell you that in my life, the overlap is 100%. Everybody mm-hmm. that I knew who had an eating disorder was vegetarian or vegan, and let that's why. You, it's, let it's let me ask you a question. What would you say to, I, I know little girls who are 10, 11, 12, who decided on their own that they didn't want to eat meat anymore because of some of your reasons, you know, and right. the parents are not stepping in. They, they're they just standing back and letting them, they can't force them. And so it's different with a teenager, you know, but what do you do with a child? What what do you think is the best approach there? I think that there needs to be a much larger, larger discussion in the culture at large and in those families to explain to these children that no matter what you eat, animals are dying. You know, that we can participate or we can dominate, but there's not any way out of death. So that what we need to do is be participants in that cycle of life and do this in a way that is protecting, you know, life on the planet. And yes, as a family, we're now going to avoid at all costs factory farming because we can all agree that those animals are tortured and that it's really bad for the planet. But that this agricultural diet is actually the destruction of the planet as well. And so that the way to repair this planet is that we have to repair uh, the ecosystems that, that the earth naturally makes. I mean, the earth wants to be a forest, and she wants to be a prairie, and she wants to be a wetland. And when we do agriculture, we destroy those things. So it's a much bigger discussion about what life on this planet should look like and the reverence we should have for the trees and for the grasses and for the rivers and ultimately for the soil. And that when we participate in those things, you know, our role as humans is to eat the animals that eat the plants. And altogether, we make a community. And that that should be our prayer, you know, that we want to be participants, humble participants in that cycle of life. And if you live in a city or in a suburb, start a little garden if you can, but ultimately go to a farm where that kind of food is being, being produced and have your children meet the farmers and have your children meet the cows and meet the chickens and have them understand that no matter what you eat, something's going to die, but that we can do that in a way that protects all of life. And that, that that's the new world that we want, and that's the culture we're trying to create. And I think that, you know, if you can show them that bigger worldview, that, you know, they can learn, you know, those new values that we need. But what they're give, being given right now is um, a very black and white, simplistic and naive view that you can choose a dinner that doesn't involve death, and it's not true. Mm-hmm. Okay? And I wanted to believe that with all my heart, but it wasn't true in the end. And the moment that I started to garden, I was immediately up against the wall because there was so much death involved in every single moment of growing that food. So to have your children participate, even if it's just some tomatoes in a barrel, you know, if you Mm -hmm. have that little more land, get chickens and ducks. It's the most fun you'll ever have. But you'll see how much death is involved. And, you know, you can teach your children to approach that with reverence and humility. And that's the attitude that the new culture, that's what we have to bring to this. I want to thank you so much for joining me today, Lier. For more information on Lier's book, The Vegetarian Myth, Go to LierKeith.com. That's L-I-E-R-R-E-K-I-E-T-H. Well, that's my show for today. Thank you so much for listening. I hope this show gave you a different perspective on the way we grow food in America and what we are feeding ourselves and our families to maintain good health. I'd like to let you know about an action alert from the Center for Environmental Health. Cadmium is a metal that causes cancer, infertility, birth defects, and other illnesses. It's also something that's been found in jewelry sold at major retailers like Claire's, the fashion authority for girls as young as age 7. To learn more about this important issue, go to generationgreen.org.
Remember, if you'd like to be entered for my drawing of some wonderful organic and natural products, you need to be on my mailing list. So go to SupernaturalMom.com, and I'll announce the winners on my April 3rd show. Now stay tuned for Smart Green Travel with Jerry Hart. I'd like to thank my producer, Noah Waldman, and thanks to Helga Helberg, host of An Organic Conversation, for creating The Green Morning on Green 960. For podcasts and more information on the show, visit YourSupernaturalLife.com. You can also download the show on iTunes and play it on your iPhone or iPod. If you'd like to read my book, go to Amazon or SupernaturalMom.com. See you here next week, and remember, have a supernatural life. I'm Beth Greer.